Can you see my uh, presentation? Yep, looks great. Okay. Well, thank you, Brian, for the wonderful introduction. And I would also like to thank uh, Brenda for an excellent presentation that preceded me. Uh, Brenda, I love the idea of clean water growing on trees, a fantastic idea. Uh, Brian, thanks again for the opportunity to talk about a unique tree planting project in the Himalayas, which is also referred to as the Janisha project. This is named after a nine-year-old girl who provided us with the inspiration. So let me start introducing my team. I'm Emmanuel De Silva, as Brian already mentioned. The other partners are Stefan Marshall, who lives in the Himalayas, uh, Janisha is his daughter, who is also part of the team. A third member is Mohan Reddy from Hyderabad, already mentioned by Brian. Uh, Mohan and I have been working together on carbon offset projects for over a decade. Friends, the Himalayas occupy about 600,000 square kilometers. Most of it falls in India. They are a place of great beauty and a source of inspiration for trekkers, climbers, and nature lovers. Here you can see some of the most stunning pictures of the Himalayan mountains. If you'd like to go on a trek sometime, my colleague Stefan would be very happy to guide you through his, through his Himalayan ecotourism enterprise. But sadly, there is also the ugly truth that deforestation and climate change are taking a toll on both the Himalayan region as well as the people. Our project to plant trees is a small step to try to reverse some of these unwanted changes. The project area is shown on the map, top right in the circle, with the villages of Pekri and Nadar shown at the bottom, where the trees have been planted. The village Bihar, at the bottom and the right is where Stefan lives. The altitude in this area is roughly 2,000 meters or 7,000 feet. The villages are near the Great Himalayan National Park, a UNESCO cultural heritage site. You can get a sense of the steepness of this terrain, which makes tree planting a challenge. So the idea for this project began with a simple conversation with Stefan just about a year ago. At that time, there was a nationwide lockdown in India and tourists had stopped visiting the Himalayas on account of the pandemic. Many of the village youths had lost work as tour guides, as cooks, and as helpers. Out of work meant out of income. So the three of us, Mohan, Stefan, and I decided to put our heads together and came up with a solution. The solution was to plant trees to put local people to work. We felt this would be a win-win situation for both local livelihoods as well as for the environment. That the benefits would be both local and global. We opted for crowdfunding to finance the project and made Janisha, the nine-year-old girl, you can see in the picture at the bottom, the face of the campaign called Walk with Janisha and plant a tree. The campaign was pretty successful and we raised over 300,000 rupees, much more than the targeted 250,000. A few of the contributors are present here today. Thank you. What is unique about this project is that we have been able to incorporate the hopes and concerns of a nine-year-old girl in project design. You know, we often talk about future generations, about leaving this planet a better place for our children and grandchildren. But the future generation is rarely involved in the design and implementation of projects. We have changed this in our initiative. Janisha, some of the women in the village and others have a voice in the project. Janisha herself wants to be a tree planter when she grows up. Maybe she will also be the next Greta Thunberg of the Himalayas. We have now completed the first phase of the project. We have planted over 1,100 saplings in around two hectares in Pekri and Nadar villages shown on the map. And these are circled in white patches. 
you will notice from this picture how difficult the terrain is. And also from this picture that follows, which is identified as the new reforestation site. So let's hear a little bit about how difficult it is to plant trees from the chairman of the village cooperative. हिमाचल प्रदेश का स्टेट ट्री है इसके अब बहुत महत्व है हिमाचल में देवदार का पेड़ बहुत कम मिलता है और काफी हाइट पे मिलता है दो हजार मीटर से ऊपर ही मिलता है क्योंकि ये बहुत सुंदर है इसका पूजन किया जाता है और इसके जो ये नील होते हैं इसका ये बदमी कुपोष के लिए बहुत ही महत्वपूर्ण है और ये बहुत महंगा मिलता है ये इसका बहुत महत्व इसलिए इसका प्लांटेशन किया so as you can see the village cooperative chairman explains the difficulties in planting the trees in his neighborhood our implementation strategy has been in two phases at one the expansion of uh, tree planting starts with the first one hectare in the first phase and which we have just completed the second phase you know is about 20 hectares or 20000 trees we have been able to reach roughly 10% of the goal and in the third phase we hope to reach about uh, 20 square mil, uh, 20 square kilometers or 200 hectares so hopefully in over, over a period of 5 years we will be able to either regenerate or plant 2 million trees and sequester about 150000 tons of carbon dioxide emission reduction uh, over a period of 20 years a second part of a strategy is to combine people power and technology. In India, local user groups are widely used in managing natural resources. So there are water users associations, forest protection committees, agriculture producer associations, and women's self-help groups. In the village of Pekri, women play an important role in selecting reforestation sites. In selecting tree species and in protecting and monitoring forests as this next video will show. So in addition to the women, children are also involved in tree planting as this picture demonstrates. So technology also has an important role. As forest fires are a concern in the Himalayas, uh, Stefan has been actually using drones to identify forest fires. In the future, we hope that we might be able to use Google Earth to monitor tree growth and carbon satellites to calculate carbon sequestration from reforestation. Perhaps uh, NASA can help us on this front. Looking ahead, using eyes above, uh, through satellite technology, along with feet on the ground, in my yeah. opinion, makes a very powerful okay. combination. Okay. The Janisha project will work in participatory and collaborative way, as I believe this is the best way forward. The forest department is involved. It provides technical inputs and have allocated two square kilometers for reforestation to us. We would like to expand our cooperation with them in the area of research. One particular area that interests us in research is to study the impact of preventing forest fires on natural regeneration. As I have mentioned, forest fires are a big issue in the Himalayas. 
but by creating fire lanes, fencing, and preventing animal grazing from certain areas, we hope nature will be able to regenerate and, and get new trees to life. So we hope to start with one hectare and expand it to say 100 hectares over a period of time. So this will be part of our future research. So there are many synergies and opportunities to work together in the areas of research, as I mentioned, spreading public awareness, and using participatory methods like local resource mapping. We are looking for partners to help us expand reforestation and support carbon sequestration. I would like to end this presentation by giving Janisha the last word. She likes to say that trees give us a future. Let's see what else she wants to say. Here's a short video uh, from her. Sorry about that. So, so thank you, Janisha, for that important message. And a thank you to all of you for listening. Uh, as it says here, big impacts start with small steps. So we have taken the first few steps. Hopefully this will lead on to something big. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. That was great. And, and, and I put in the, the comment section, you know, she has such great insight at such a young age. So that's absolutely amazing about all, uh, everything that, she, that she's doing and that you're doing with her you know, with this project. So um, right now I'd like to have a little bit of Q&A. Does anybody have any questions for Brenda uh, and or Emmanuel regarding their projects? You can please feel free to put it in the chat or um, unmute and ask your question live if you'd like. Hey Brian, this is Peter Falcon. Um, it's not so much a question, but a comment um, uh, to Emmanuel. Uh, really, this is like the first time we, in the US we have a saying where it says something like, it takes a village to do something. Uh, for the first time, I actually see what that meant in your presentation. When I saw the women and the children and the men of the village coming together to plant these trees, that was very amazing and quite inspiring. And as I mentioned, for the first time, I actually understand what that term now means. So thank you for that. Uh, yes, Peter, this is actually a very good example of it takes a village. So uh, let me bring in my colleague, uh, Stefan, who actually lives in the village. Perhaps he can share his perspective about working with women and the girls. Stefan, would you like to share a few words? Yeah, hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, sure. Actually, uh, for me, it's uh, um, I feel really rejoice when I see, of course, a, a tree plantation. But when it is done by the woman, uh, I know very well what is the uh, woman's status uh, in the rural uh, part of India. And uh, when I see that uh, um, they can take responsibility in planting trees and uh, that they take that really with heart, their heart and uh, so it's that rejoice my heart uh, even more and uh, having the kids involved uh, this is also something I believe in uh, they must be involved in uh, such project to uh, reconnect with nature and uh, again take responsibility uh, for uh, taking care of the environment uh, yeah I'm sorry my kid is there <laughs> yeah thank you so much yeah, it's the birthday of my, my son, I'm sorry, and he's disturbing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to him. Yeah, happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm in California. We have forest fires, and we have uh, a, a, a emergency here for the ongoing future. 
we would like to participate with Philadelphia and with the Himalayas with our farm in Ohio and our farm in Fermana. We think that um, this is amazing, but uh, it's from my research, it looks as if kids uh, as they enter education may be multilingual kids and learning the language of trees and compassion is terrific, but also having this research about desertification and how trees can play a role in the carbon banking of this, we'd like to stay in touch and share with you what we're doing and, and partner somehow. Uh, thanks, Bob. Maybe you can share your uh, contact, or email, or phone number through the chat box, and we'll get back to you. Wonderful yeah. idea. But I think I want to say one more thing about Ganesha, even though her sound quality could go up. I think that happens all the time with all of us. It happened with my class last night. Um, I think that what my research is this month for all the work I've been doing is that the one we are the youngest uh, group working together with one of the largest school districts and then this then the second largest school district um, comparing and contrasting how we have to have kids be part of this because once these children learn how to be integrated into their their world into the other worlds or combine and contrast we're going to have an incredible generation of scientists and of learners and so i'm not concerned where they're going to go someday. I'm really concerned they have breathable air and that we have uh, livable cities and, and, and rural places. So we're looking forward to growing up with her. Absolutely. If I may, uh, there are, since there are so many students from Oman, from Taiwan and other places, would they have any questions to ask? Well, over to you, uh, Brian. Uh, 